Hello, welcome back to another video. So I have this to sort out today, and it's not what it looks like. Right, so what it is, is the end out of this roller. This is a roller off a flail mower that goes on uh, the front or the back of a tractor. So you can see this one's broken out, and the shaft is very worn. Well, it's about half the length it should be. This is the other end, this is the better end, but it's still not very good. The shaft is worn, and then it looks like it's been built, built back up and ground back down. So I'll have to do some of that, some of that as well, I think. So these are the end plates that house the bearings. And it's, as you can see, they're not in a very good state. But they do have a pretty hard life. They spend all of their life at ground level. And it looks like this one spent some of its time below ground level. But they get full up with grass and soil and stuff, and then the bearings just disintegrate. You can see that one's completely disintegrated. Worn the end of the shaft off, then the shaft has been wearing up into the rest of the plate. So I'll have a new one of these to make as well. That one might be all right, but I might make a little bush to weld into there to make the hole tighter again. So then with this, I'll have this shaft to remove out of there and I'll make a new shaft and weld it in. But before I start on that, the first job I'll do is I'll Take these in bits so I can get the centre of a bearing out. I can measure it and see what diameter that shaft is supposed to be. Right, so I've got one of these bearing races cleaned up. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be 35 mil. It's slightly it measures slightly bigger than 35, but not near enough to be an imperial equivalent. So I think it's supposed to be 35 mil. You can see how slack it is on there. You can see on this shaft as well how, how slack it is on that shaft. So it's definitely going to need a new shaft in there. And that's the. Uh, Inside of the plate, you can see how bad that is. That was a cap that came off it. That's how much of the cap it's worn away. So I'll set this up now. I'll set it up, see it in there, and I'll try and gouge around there as gently as I can with the arcade gouger and get rid of that weld. And then do the same on that side, and hopefully that stub shaft should come out. So I've had a few people ask me what I use to run my Arcare gouger. Um, I just use my normal welder, Tech Arc welder, 400 amp. So all you do is you just turn it on to, turn it on to constant current instead of constant voltage, and then turn the output onto MMA, and then that's ready to go. Just turn your voltage up on your, turn your amps up on your box, wire feed box like you do normally. Any cable, just plug it into the back where the power comes out to go to that. So it's yeah, it's as simple as that. And it has enough power to burn these eight mil rods when you're at 400 amp. So I'm only going to be using these 6.5s to do this job.
So I've gouged all the way around there. Gouged all the way around there. You can see the separation line all the way around. But it still won't come out. I've given it some wax with hammer and it won't move. So I think it's maybe welded onto this plate on both sides before they weld it in around there. So I think I'll have to melt away the top and then melt away into the hole to get rid of the weld that's on the inside. So I've gouged all that side away now. So there's no weld at all around there. It still doesn't want to come out. You can see that's all clear all the way around there. So I'm gonna to have to do the same this side, I think. They must have welded it on the back side, the back side of there before they welded that plate in, maybe. So uh, I'll do the same, I'll chop that off and then I'll gouge through the inside of that hole and then there'll just be like a stub left in the middle. I've got it out without damaging the actual hole. You can see see the line where the hole is and where the pin was. So I tied all that up, tied the other side up, and then it should be right for putting a new one in. So I've just been around the inside with a rod to melt out the weld from the inside. Now you can see the old bit of shaft is just peeling out. So and then that should leave me a nice, clean, original hole when I put the new shaft in. Right, so that's out. I'm left with a nice clean circle now. Bits of, a few bits of weld. I'll have to stack out there with a die grinder. original original hole size there just with a bit gouged out so new shaft should go in there nice so for the shaft that i'm going to replace it with i think i'm going to use a bit of em19 or 4140 uh, it might just be a bit harder wearing than general en8 <coughs> especially if, if the bearings come loose or move a bit on the shaft it might help it last a bit longer so i'll cut a bit of that and then you can weld it in
Right, so I've just been having a bit of a think about this. And uh, before I chopped it out, I measured the end of the old pin, the old shaft, and that measured about 36 mil. But then when you measure them, they measure 35 mil. This new shaft that I've cut fits in there, but it's slack. So I think the original shaft must have been 36 mil turned down to 35, and then had a step on it, because the shaft will need a step on it to stop the bearing from sliding up and down on the shaft. I'll stop the whole roller sliding like that. I think that's maybe what's why the shafts have worn out is because uh, they haven't had a big enough step on them. Or the shaft's worn down and then someone's rebuilt the shaft and ground the whole lot down to 35 mil. And then the, bear, the roller's just been slopping up and down in these bearings. Yeah, I think this is meant to have had a step on it originally. You can see where someone's been round it with weld and then ground it back down so the bearing fits on it, which will have like done away with a step. And then the bearing has just been sliding on the shaft and wearing the shaft out. So I think what I'm gonna do with this now is put it in the lathe and bar that out to 50 mil. So then I can put a 50 mil shaft in there and with it turned down to 35 mil on the end. Then the bearing has a a good step to push against and then I'll do the same with the other shaft on the other end of the roller when I, when I do that one but the only thing I don't know is how wide these plates are on the on the machine for where this where there's steps or where the bearings would need to be on the shaft so I might have to find that out before I weld well the shaft scene otherwise it'll either be too wide or too narrow if that makes sense so that's held in the lathe now, so I'm going to bar that out to 50 mil. Right, so it's a different day now. I can't remember what I said last time, but we've got that board out to 40 mil. So that shaft fits in there. So what I need to do now is turn this shaft down to 35 mil, so it'll fit the new bearing. So I've got that turned down to diameter. I'm gonna put a chamfer on it now. To put a chamfer on it, I'm gonna use a boring bar because my compound's already set at 45 degrees. So I'm just gonna spin the lathe backwards and use a boring bar to take the chamfer off that edge. So I'm a bit limited on the lathe tooling that I have. I don't have a, like a neutral tool to chamfer things. So I never really intended on doing as much machining as what I am doing. So. That's sort of why I'm limited on lathe tooling at the moment. Right, so I'm just going to show you some maths on how I'm working out where this step needs to be in correspondent to everything else. So I know that the, the width of the machine is 27... 8.4 that's the width of where these plates clamp onto so these plates clamp onto the side of the machine like that the machine's on the inside and the bearing goes on the outside obviously so that width is that the distance between the top of this plate and the face of that where the step sits is 17 mil so there'll be two 17 mils because two bearings either side so that's 34 onto that which is 2818 so my 2818 is how far I need between that shoulder and that shoulder 
but that'd be pretty difficult to measure because obviously that'll be they'll be in there like that so they'll be pretty difficult to measure so if i measure the roller if i measure the roller off that flap there down to sort of the midpoint of that weld because i'm going to be chopping this one off as well to do this one so that's like 2635 so then if I have my roller width, which is, what did I say it was? 2635. And take away that measurement, which is the measurement between the, the shoulders on the shafts. So that's 2818, and that equals 183. So that's, and then I need to divide that by 2, which gives me 91. Five. So that means that I need this shoulder 91.5 millimetres off the flat, off this edge where it joins up. So if I set that up now, I can measure from there down to there, or I can do it. What I might do is I can measure it better now, see what that measurement is, and then put a space from the bottom to get that measurement right and then put that spacer in in the bottom of there and see that shaft in it and then i know that i've got me 91.5 so i might round it up to 92 just to be easier and then uh, can weld that round do the same with the other one and then hopefully when i put them onto the roller i should be back to that number right so i've skimmed a bit off the end of this one to make it 92 mil from there to there I'm not going to do the other one yet because it depends how well the other end cuts off the uh, roller. So that's ready to weld in now. I'm just going to give the shaft a bit of a preheat before I weld it in. Uh, it'd probably be alright without because it's not a very high load application. But I've seen shafts fail before where, where they've been welded in. So just for a bit of peace of mind I'm going to preheat it. Might warm that up a little bit, but it's only thin as that, so that should be all right. And then I'll weld it in. Got that welded round. People keep telling me in the comments that I need to make or get a rotary welding table. I might make one eventually as a project, but it's quite fun welding all the way around. That welding into the end of the roller now. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to set the roller up on these plates. I made these for a previous job similar to this. So I'm going to set, use the bearing on the shaft on that end of the roller. So I'll set that up at that end of the bench. And then I'll have these rollers at this end of the bench. So then I can roll the roller around, true this up with a dial gauge. It doesn't need to be super accurate, but it's just a bit better if it's set up somewhere like. Tack it round. And then I'll have to prep that. Anyway, you'll see that when I get to it. So yeah, I'm going to set it up on these bearings now, that one end, and then sat on these two. So I've got the roller sat on my bench now. I've got a bit of box section under either end, a bit of box section the same size. And then now I've tacked these rollers onto here, onto my bench. So when I get the other end set up, I can take this bit of box section out and it'll run round on these bearings and I have to clean it up, give it a clean up so it runs true. So at this end, I think I'm just going to use that one of these old plates and I bolt the bearing onto there and I can tack this old plate onto the end of my bench. It's just this shaft is very worn. So I might just go around it with electrical tape a few times just to make up the difference, just so the bearing's not wobbling about. And then uh, that'll run true. And I can weld the other end round and turn the whole turn the whole thing round and then chop this end off and renew this shaft.
Right, so that spins in there now. I just have to give it a bit of a clean up where them bearings run. I clean my bench before this job and it seems like I put two things down and my bench is back to being in this mess again. So it's like a never ending battle. Right, so I've got a few tacks around there, but it was proving difficult to get it anything like true. So I've moved my dial gauge onto the end of the roller. You can see that there is now on five on a little pointer. And you turn it round. It goes all the way to two. So it's like three mil out of, out of being straight for some reason. So that's going to make it a bit more tricky trying to get this something like true. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's it's a roller. It's not a not a shaft or anything, so it doesn't matter. Within you know, there's a good bit of tolerance. Setting the end out, we'll start again. I put a mark on there where my low spot is or high spot, furthest that furthest that way anyway. So I put this back in here and there is a little bit of movement. Can't quite see it, but I'll put all the movement that way. So then uh, it might counteract the five mil wobble that it has, well, three mil wobble that it has. So I think this is probably about the nearest I can get it without spending ages and ages on it. So if we look, that's at three, just past three, zero. And its low spot is two, just gone zero. So it's, it's like a millimeter out which I think for this job will be perfectly acceptable. So I'll put some, just three stitches around it now. That should be enough to hold it. So now I can put some weld prep on it, can grind, grind that out all the way around and I'll leave them bits and weld it round and then grind them bits out and weld over them as well. Right, so I've been in there with the slitting disc and I've chopped a slither out and then I've ground it out, put a bit of a V on it. So I think I'm going to weld this up with a TIG, just for a bit more practice.
So I've been round them three bits that I ground out and prepped with TIG. So now I'm going to ground out these other bits and TIG them round. I've checked it with my dial gauge again. I'm still within one mil like I was to start with. So I haven't moved. So I ground them out and then weld them bits up. Right, so I've gone all the way around there now. It's not very consistent. It's the first time I've done a weld like that with a TIG, so it's a bit of figuring out the best way to do it. I don't think my filler rod is sticking off either. It's 0.6 mil, uh, 1.6 mil filler. So you're like constantly having to feed it in. Anyway, I'll, I'll ground around the top of that and then I think I'll do a, a filler cap with a MIG. Ground around there. It's ready to go over with the, with the weld now. I'm going to tack that on there so I can put my earth clamp onto it. So I'm not... Well, I suppose I could put it on that bit of the shaft, maybe. I could do one of them things like Curtis has at Cutting Edge, cutting edge Engineering, where he has a thing that he tacks on the end and then uh, it rotates round with it. So that's that welded round. I had a bit too much power on to start with, I was burning through in a few places. But I only got the power turned around, turned down, weld the ground nice. It was a bit too lumpy on the rollers to to turn it and weld it at the same time, so I was just welding a bit, turning it a bit, welding a bit, turning a bit. But no, that's that end done. So I'm gonna chop the other end off and do the same with the other end now. So I'll just show you before I knock it off, I've got it half knocked off, but just how little weld there was that was actually holding it on. So no wonder the other one broke off. So that's come off there exactly how I hoped it would do. So you can still see that machined lip round there. So when I put it back in, I've got that to go off. But you can see why the other one broke off, because there's not much weld that actually holds them on. There's only depth of that little lip there. 
because he's running on the ground all the time as soon as like the top bit of weld is worn off then there isn't much weld left at all so with this one rather than uh, gouging it out the stub shaft i'm going to put it in a lathe so i've chopped it off of the grinder and i hold that in the lathe drill it drill it out and then i can bar it to 40 mil That's that one drilled through. That shaft to go in. I drilled it and then remed it. So there's that well to grind down. That's a leftover stub shaft it. Drilled out. I've just got one tack on this end holding this on. And I've just got my tape measure down the other end up to the uh, step or up to the bearing at the other end and now I'm just going to measure from there to 2818 and push or pull this shaft you know out to get to the measurement I need and I'll take that bar in and I can take it back off again and weld it in So that's that welded round. So same process with this now. Tack it on, drew it up best I can, put a few stitches round it, and then weld prep it, TIG weld the root, and then go over the top of the MIG. So this one again is within a mil, so near enough. No point trying to spend any more time getting any nearer. I welded around that one. I didn't bother doing it with a TIG first, I just went straight around it with a MIG. And about on the limit of burning through all the time, so it should be better than it was origin originally. The only trouble is if these ever have to come off again, there's no lip on the inside anymore because the weld has melted through it. So it'd be stronger than it was originally, it would just be a lot more difficult to if they ever need replacing again. So I'm just measuring this now. Take measure and straight edge onto there. That comes in at 
About 218, 2818, which is about bang on what we wanted. 2817, 2818, so within half a mil. So that's bang on, that'll do. Right, so that's that roller done, both ends. Both ends got new shafts in now. So I've got a chisel set up again there, just so you can see how it runs. So it's a little bit out, but for what it is, it wasn't worth spending any more time getting it any nearer. So that's that job done.